so there's a Buddhist, a Catholic, and a Wiccan standing at the bar. And the Wiccan says to the other two, Oh, <laughs> welcome to Progressive Soup. My name is David Stevenson. Tonight, myself, David Stevenson, <laughs> Gene Hislop, co-host, and Alicia Forberth. Who Forberth. Will, who will, well, first of all, she'll, she'll pronounce her name accurately. <laughs> and then she'll introduce herself. Hi, I'm Reverend Alicia Fulberth. Reverend Alicia Fulberth is um, actually the high priestess of the Pantheon Temple um, in Connecticut, which is actually Connecticut's only pagan church, I believe, maybe the only pagan church in New England. Well, no, no, we're, we're not the only one anymore, but we were the first kids on the block uh, wow. in 1995. Cool. And at least she, in Connecticut. And she is also a very noted um, author, artist, and graphic designer. Um, and so we're going to be talking a little bit today um, about some of the roots of Halloween and how they actually tie back to um, ancient pagan traditions, um, specifically the upcoming holiday of Samhain in the pagan calendar. We'll be explaining a little bit about what Wicca is um, and uh, where it came from. And we'll also be talking about um, basically how paganism um, ties into modern society. So Probably want to clear a lot of things up on what Wiccan isn't, too. That is what I'm hoping to do tonight. So hopefully we'll be able to dispel some of the... Uh, dispel? <laughs> dispel some of the... Is that, is that a magic dispel? Dispelling many of the uh, horrible stereotypes and mythology, but also showing us how many times we are actually celebrating pagan roots without knowing it these days. So Absolutely. So what do you have to tell us about uh, this upcoming holiday of Samhain? What is Samhain all about? Uh, Samhain is a uh, Gaelic for summer's end. It's really the old Celtic New Year. Uh, it, it's kind of funny when we think about the, the holidays that we have in our calendar, um, at least the uh, Christian ones. I, I should probably rephrase it as Christianized ones because many of the pagan holidays were indeed adopted. And uh, they were given uh, new meanings in some sense with the new religion. Um, I'm referring that into that as the, the pagan religion being the mm -hmm. old religion and Christianity being the new religion. Um, because they really didn't have any holidays on their calendar. And in, in the process of converting over the pagans, they needed to do something to bring them into you know, Christianity as well. That's what I gathered from yeah. I heard a lot about how uh, you know, Chris, Christmas ended up on on just about at the, uh, the, the winter solstice. When right. In fact, it obviously... The likelihood is that Jesus was probably born in the summertime anyway. Right. There's a lot of things that, and, and, and maybe that was a reach out to, um, to earth religious people to get them to filter into Christianity, perhaps. Well, you know, uh, the, in some sense, uh, yes. But, you know, old habits uh, die hard and old customs die even harder. Uh, with uh, Samhain, you know, it was very important because, you know, this is the beginning of the new year for them. And also, too, it, it's agricultural. It would really traditionally happen when the fir first frost actually fell. And you wouldn't touch the crops anymore after that. Mm -hmm. uh, they believed that that belonged to the world of spirit at that point. So the plants actually died in the same sense that people die, maybe? In some sort of a sense. They're seeing that as being the veil between the worlds. There, there's two major conjunctions for that. You have it at Samhain and you have it at Beltane. Samhain is actually the beginning of the dark half of the Celtic year. Mm -hmm. Okay, and be it Beltane the winter, is... The winter right, half, yeah. Right. Um, so we have some of those same customs that have, ha that have actually carried over. There was always kind of a, uh, not only just a reverence for the dead, but also a respect and a little bit of fear for the dead. Uh, and therefore people would, let's say, done things like masks. And, you know, the, they were seeing that the, the world of spirit was walking along with the world of the living. So if you wore a mask, they couldn't really tell who you were. <laughs> oh, <excellent>. <laughs> <laughs> now, where does the tradition yeah. of jack-o'-lanterns and such turnips. figure in? Uh -huh. Turnips. They used to actually carve turnips and uh, the little faces and things. And they used to uh, actually put candles inside them. When they, when the Irish came here to the states, they found out the pumpkins were really quite nifty for that <laughs> purpose, and you could have, you could do a lot more with them. They than were a lot larger, a, certainly. A turnip. 
So uh, a lot more jovial too, probably, and yeah. more, more certainly more face-like. Well, I mean, even uh, you know, even on the uh, some faces kind of resemble turnips, I guess. <laughs> I kind of think of them as being pumpkin gargoyles. <laughs> So yes. they were used for more protection yes. than lights? Yes. Uh, well, the thing is, it's not just lights. It's, you know, protection. Everything is, is connected. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think that there's probably a single absolute reason why ancient peoples did anything. Um, even somebody was, was talking about why in the world would, you know, people here in the New World waste a perfectly good pumpkin. And, you know, my first yeah. thought was, well, you know, anybody who's raised on the farm knows darn well that when pumpkins get too big, they're not really good for much anymore, except maybe stewing. That's true. Yeah. However, they're really good to feed to your pigs. <laughs> that is true. So if even you had like your, your Halloween or Samhain pumpkin, um, and you carved it out, you had saved the seeds, you know what, you've still got that pumpkin, after you're done with it, you give it to your pigs. <laughs> that is a good idea. Oh, yeah. okay, yep. Yeah, nothing gets wasted on a, on a farm. No, that's no. true. Kristen will vouch for that, being, yeah. being on the farm of Richfield. Everything, you know, the, all the, with the, Trixie and Alice, the two um, Vietnamese pot-bellied pigs, right. when they have a party there and there's food left on plates down into the yard and <laughs> Trixie and Alice are in uh, pot belly pig heaven. <laughs> I'm sure. So what are some of the other symbols that we use so frequently at Halloween? I have spoken with you uh, before about the image of the green face, which I think that's oh, a yes. very important one that we should talk about tonight. Um, you know, we see, uh, dating back to at least the Wizard of Oz, if not before that, the image mm -hmm. of the green face, oh, which, yeah. um, and really, what does that symbolize? You know, that, that's one of the hardest things, I think, to talk about in terms of uh, the, the, the times when they actually used to persecute people for being witches and, and by far I don't believe that they were catching witches I believe they were catching Christians and it's, it's really about misogyny because almost all, all of them were women um, and I think it's also kind of horrifying because you know we, we would hope that somebody would respect their elders in a culture but at that time just being old was suspicious that you were doing something. Mm -hmm. well, we're talking about a time where people didn't really necessarily participate in rational thought. Um, like the superstition kind of ran rampant during, you know. It did. You know, people, people, uh, cultures develop and they learn, and until they, until they understand something, they're going to put something fanciful in place of fact. But, you know, the witches became the scapegoats. It's mm -hmm. about power and control. And, I mean, you know, you don't want to say, okay, well, your harvest was, was blighted by the weather or something. You want to blame it on somebody else or something else. Something you can control rather than yeah. the weather, which obviously we have no control over. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it was for political reasons. Sometimes, you know, maybe somebody was eyeing somebody else's farm. Yeah. Perfect way to get rid of them. But the truly horrifying part was how we view witches now that you will see them as being green-faced hags that they'll hang up at Halloween. Um, some po folks who are witches <laughs> sort of embrace that ish image, and I don't. Um, yes, it, it, it's, it's something that's almost become a part of pop culture. But at one time, when the people were tried for being witches, they would stick them in cells that are, were a little bigger than coffins. They would leave them there for months on end. By the time they took them out into the witch carts and would bring them to trial, if you can even call it a trial, they were in bad shape. Mm -hmm. You know, their skin wasn't even a normal color. They hadn't seen sunlight in months. So they probably were even you know, more, it was even easier to, um, to persecute with them at that point. Well, I mean, that they looked yeah. grotesque because they had been locked up for so long, you know, and they had long nails and... And I'm sure that there, there were probably things growing on their face and things like that because they hadn't, you know, been able to bathe or anything else for who knows how long. And, and uh, the hair would have been all messed up and tangled and, and growing for quite some time. That's so exactly what people would want to fix on in terms of calling somebody a witch. hideous and yeah. or calling them a witch or making yeah. them out to be different in some way than... than, than 
than normal people. Well, and the thing is, you know, at one point I actually got into a bit of, or of an argument with uh, <laughs> someone I used to work with. And he was talking about, well, I think it was a good thing that they killed those witches. And I dropped my jaw. And I'm like, what? You know, people, they don't even process this stuff. Somebody actually said that? Somebody actually said that to me, yes. The truth is that, um, you know, in a, in a world where Christianity and uh, other mainstream religions have so much power, unfortunately, they're very, it seems to me, protective over that power. And, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, new, newer religions, and it's odd because we're, you know, paganism is not a new religion. It's an ancient <laughs> religion that's been, you know, grown and evolved over time. However, they view it as a minority religion, a, a new age religion. Religion, mm-hmm. they, they're able to brush it aside or worse, demonize it. And um, I, we go through this, you know, even today with Christine O'Donnell uh, making her yeah. comments in Delaware. Tell me that because I that don't watch lame. television anymore, <laughs> except for Progressive Super, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, fill me yeah. in on a little bit of this. So you, you told a little, a little bit off camera about this, about this interview where she made some remarks about, uh, about Wiccans. I think Alicia's actually posted a couple articles on her Facebook. Do you know exactly what she had said? Uh, I, I don't think I could probably paraphrase it correctly, but she was coming out and effectively saying, you know, well, I dabbled in witchcraft and was talking about some sort of satanic altar. And we were all just like, what? Because, you know, Satanism has nothing to do with witchcraft. I don't know what the heck she was doing then. Um, was she participating in something Wiccan? I don't think so, because I don't think she would have come out with that uneducated a statement if she had. Mm-hmm. I think she was probably somebody who went and, uh, I don't know, probably did some things she shouldn't have done, <laughs> played with maybe Ouija boards or something like that, and somehow, you know, thought because she read a couple of, of books on strange things is that somehow made her a witch. Do Ouija boards, do tarot <laughs> cards, do, does any of that stuff fit into Wiccan? You Wicca? Know, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, because usually most of us uh, will at least understand, if not actually practice, some f- form of divination, by mm-hmm. whatever means that, that takes. Uh, some people do use uh, Ouija boards. They're actually spirit boards. Mm-hmm. And they were very popular in the Victorian era. Everybody used to use them, you know. Yeah. Um, a parlor game, I guess. Yeah, before TV. <laughs> um, just like reading tea leaves, you know, things oh. like that. Mm-hmm. Which apparently my great-grandmother used to do at uh, church functions. Oh. Wow. <laughs> and, and that it actually also ties into... Better than into bingo, s- right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and that actually fits into Samhain as well, because Samhain yeah. is uh, the time because, uh, you know, as you mentioned, the veil being thin and such, it's yes. a perfect time for divination. So a lot of those divination mm-hmm. practices are actually practiced on Samhain. Um, and I believe even the practice of, like, peeling apples and watching how the peels fell, which fell, which is a common Halloween party mm-hmm. um, you activity. You throw them over your shoulder and see what, what initial that they, they make, you know, see who's... Who you're going to marry? Who's yeah, your true love. things like that. I was going to say with the Daisy, she loves me, she loves me not, she loves me, she loves me not. And of yeah. course, you could t- at a pretty quick glance, you could figure out if there's an odd <laughs> number or an even number of uh, <laughs> petals on a Daisy. Yes. Yeah, I gave that one up a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of silly. Yes, it is. So a lot of our, unfortunately, our, our um, imagery at Halloween has to be probably pretty disturbing to witches, I would, I would imagine. Yeah, it is. At least, uh, you know, I can say for myself it, it is for me because, you know, um, uh, I'm, I'm very mixed. I'm definitely an American, and uh, I do have a, a Jewish great-grandmother. You know, and I uh, and I don't we all. Well, <laughs> even those of us that don't have any Jewish grandmothers have somebody which plays the role of the Jewish grandmother. I think so. Yeah, she uh, got out of Germany before things got really weird, and they were kind of weird even then. Yeah. And you know, I have to think of that. I have to think of the Nazi death camps, and I think about those people, how horrible they looked at the end, even when they were being rescued by the Americans. Yeah, and yet. You know, this is effectively what we are celebrating. We are taking someone who has been tortured, who has imprisoned, who has been starved, and we're putting them up as a cartoon on our doors. 
you know, you wouldn't think about doing that with somebody, you know, effectively who had been a prisoner of war at Auschwitz, and you know what, except for the fact that their hair was shaved, they looked probably just as bad a shape as the witches did by the time that they were put on trial. Probably way off topic. And yeah. Probably, a, 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 probably a, you'll tell me if it's a if it's a dopey question. Yeah. The first people that the Nazis went after were the gypsies. Who? Is there any relationship between um, Wicca and and yeah. gypsy or just just gypsies? Yeah. Just a group, any group of people that that basically travel, that migrate from point I to point. I wouldn't say it was job. any group of people. Um, they, they were their own people. They were the last uh, nomadic people. So uh, were the nomadic people within, within the, the continent of Europe? Yeah, yeah. And they, they, you know, I've talked to other people before, and they said, yes, they really were from India originally. Okay. They, they practice their own form of magic. They, yes, they did do things like readings and such. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, they were considered less than human um, by the Nazi regime, as were Jews, as wa were anyone who was gay, you know. Mm -hmm. So these people were, were singled out. Tell me, as we're discussing um, basic prejudices and, and uh, misconstructions and such, during the 80s I remember a great deal of witch hysteria, that there were huge um, rumors of, of, you know, I mean, a lot of kids were taken away from their parents under these accusations that parents were doing uh, satanic rituals mm -hmm. and molesting their children, and a lot of it was debunked, and of course these families have been reunited, but there was a lot of witch hysteria going on back then, and I remember tons of books and documentaries and 2020 episodes of Satanism and witchcraft. Do we still yeah. encounter that today, or has some of that gone away? I think yes and no. Um, people are still very confused with the word word cult and occult mm -hmm. and what that actually means where a cult is something you know that's hidden um, I can tell you straight point blank Wicca is not a cult <laughs> 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 you know we're, we're, we're the, all the heretics we're the free thinkers mm -hmm. You know, um, uh -oh, we're gonna creative the word liberal people. Pretty soon, aren't we? <laughs> well, I can't say all of us are. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> I would say a majority are, and I think that even in some sense, I think that we already had those leanings in the first place. But also, too, I think with, I think for the strange new animal that's entered into politics, uh, that is very much a religious animal. Mm -hmm. We haven't quite seen that in in some years. And the fact is, is that they don't like minority religions. Um, now, me, I'm, I'm definitely on the coffee side of things. Mm -hmm. So, so I like things that are progressive. Um, I, I hate to think that we will go back to a, a time where uh, critical thought is not possible anymore in our culture. It sounds like, it sounds like. Um People that uh, that are involved with Wicca are open-minded and, and have looked at all the religious options and probably gravitate to some one religion or the other or the other to a degree. But maybe and correct me if I'm wrong again and find Wicca as kind of a an, an adjunct to that, an additional thing which helps explain the universe around us to them. Is that am I being? Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, it's really for people that are looking for more than a surface value of things. They want to go deeper. So they it's want not real a replacement answers. religion. It's, it's, an, it's an addition to, to your own personal, personal beliefs to help. Well, Wick is non-dogmatic. So, so not dogmatic, any, okay. Yeah. So you're expected to find your own personal truth, and that can happen through uh, spiritual epiphanies, if you will. Mm -hmm. But th this is something that when someone becomes a seeker, they spend their whole entire life questing. Mm -hmm. If they really um, step into that, all I can say is that effectively there's like a, a river of, of spirit. And, you know, some people like to wade in a little bit, you know, in the kitty section. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, eventually, sooner or later, there's something that happens that either through um, 
your own volition, Mm -hmm. or you just somehow get too deep into those waters and you get picked up by that current and it just becomes a part of your being and that's that's something that you do for the rest of your life because it is a mystery religion. Um, And you become, I guess, it's safe to say, more enlightened perhaps? I wouldn't even say, not in that strange... I'm going to think of um, no insult to anybody out there, but Mm -hmm. in terms of something that's... Asian, that that form of enlightenment that might pertain to something like Buddhism, Mm -hmm. um, we don't have that kind of um, outlook. There's no great, I have arrived, I will be a Buddha or anything like that. Um, But there there is a a level of relevation, a level of self-truth that happens, just like at the Oracle of Delphi, know thyself. Mm -hmm. That is really what it is that we're doing. It's, it's not just something that ex- is external. We are doing something that's very much internal. So it's more of a self-fulfilling thing that you, you go in whatever direction your mind and your, and your beliefs take you and, and you gather up, if you will, gather up more, more knowledge as you go? But there's a, something that happens here where you have like a real direct connection to the divine. Mm-hmm. There is no intermediary. You know, the, you are your own priest or a priestess, oh. and you're, you actually work with these forces of the universe. You actually work with divinity. And, you know, that in and of itself makes changes within you. So how does the high priest position in Wicca, Wiccan traditions, as if I don't know, but... How does the high priestess again. yeah <laughs> how does the high priestess position differ from a priest or a pastoral position in other mainstream religions um, well it it may differ quite a bit in traditional craft um, the focus is on the coven mm-hmm. the, there there is not a focus out outside of that per se you don't have a laity uh, a laity is something new to Wicca. We, there are plenty of people who have declared themselves Wiccan who may have never worshipped as such, may have never attended a coven, may have never actually been initiated, may not, not have had any of those experiences. But there's a lot of reading material out there. There's a lot of information on the Internet that didn't used to be there. Yeah, so they just kind of convey upon themselves that, hey, I, I'm cool. I'm cool. Well, not so some people do. Some yeah. people do. Some people are really serious about this, though. Mm-hmm. And those people will eventually find their their way to to probably some form of traditional craft somewhere mm-hmm. down the road. But the the call, true calling of priesthood, is something that's very special. It's not the average person that would be called to something like this. What separates? Is yeah. it a, is it a, a, a level of is it a level of looking inward? Is it um is it a level of understanding, learning more about the history, the uh, the makings of it? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things that uh, you just don't really have true words for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm doing? I'm doing exactly what you told me not to do. I'm trying to def- look, at, look at it and define it and find a box that it fits into. And you were telling me before the show, and I think the audience should probably think this way also, just take a step outside the box. Let okay. yourself wander within the understanding. And with, uh, Go ahead. With many of these minority religions, like um, paganism is, you cannot define it by the, the standards and the levels of other mainstream religions mm-hmm. because it is so far removed from that. Mm-hmm. It really is its own culture. It is not. It's, it's, it's almost a culture, not simply a spirituality. I, and I shouldn't say that. It's not simply a religion. I think a spirituality is more definitive than mm-hmm. religion. Um, mm-hmm. It is a religion, but because it affects how we think and our life completely, it is more than just 
a religion. A religion, you can go to church on Sundays mm -hmm. or you can go to temple, you know, three times a week or whatever it is, and you follow observances and therefore you mm -hmm. are meeting your standards. Because Wicca and paganism cause you to reflect so much more inwardly, it causes you to constantly evolve and to self uh, to self assess and to grow it is more of a um, spirituality because it's not something you can fulfill through other people's commands mm -hmm. nobody can tell you this is what you need to do and they'll, you'll be a good Wiccan you know this is something you have to actually reflect on yourself so I think that's where a um, Wiccan priestess in my opinion if I can answer my own question is a little bit different than a, a Christian priest in other words, they're yeah. not giving you all of the answers. Uh, we're also not hired. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Yeah, I, th I think that's that. This is really it has to be a calling of the heart. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, no, that's that's things that are that, that are best for the world are things that people that, that people do not for profit. Uh, there, there's also to. Um, you know, for myself, because I, I'm in this rather unique position. We have a public temple, but mm -hmm. I'm studying a tradition that actually has a very private face. So uh, I think one of the things that people also get very confused over is that private face. Let's just say that maybe a traditional coven would have. It's not that necessarily anybody's keeping anything from anyone that, you know, there's all these secret practices, if you mm -hmm. will. But the, the secrets are effectively keys within tradition that open up doors. And when you're ready to pass through that door, you have the key. But, you know, the reason why there is secrecy is because this is a very sacred thing. It, it is not to be made profane. And therefore, um, because there is such a, a deep connection with... Uh, Okay, the, the the spirits and the divine, I think that that makes uh, all the difference in the world. As we only have a minute left, I would like very much <laughs> to uh, end on a note, a very high note. Um, they are going to be, the Pantheon Temple, of which um, Alicia is the high priestess, will be having a public event on October 23rd. And mm -hmm. what time does that begin? That begins at 6. And it will have a Samhain ceremony, which, of oh, course, is the, the day. That's the one with the hayride, too? That is the yes. one with the hayride and a that. huge drum circle and yeah. bonfire. Um, admission is $18 in advance if you reserve yes. through Eventbrite. Eventbrite. Um, you can find Alicia Fulberth, Reverend Alicia Fulberth, on Facebook. You should be able to find the link to the to the event. And the Pantheon event. Temple. And the Pantheon Temple on yeah. Facebook. And then you can find the link to uh, pre-register. It would be $25 at the door. And we really hope that you'll stop by and enjoy that. It's a public event. Awesome. It should be a lot of fun. Sounds like a good Halloween alternative where it's a little less hokey than, a little less hokey than Halloween a little more a great way to serious. celebrate the harvest and mm -hmm. celebrate our ancestors so we do hope that you'll take the time and uh, check out Alicia Fulber great thanks it's been Progressive Soup David Stevenson Jean Love, and Alicia Fulber